Hi all, I'm Arvind Pandian. In our today's video, we're going to see about a company which works on battery and energy related sector. Right? And also this company which we're going to discuss today, as you would have noticed in the thumbnail, you have a major opportunity that you could earn up to 100 plus percentage returns. We usually bring these kind of um, stocks for you to invest at right point. So do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get these kind of videos on time. Right? Now we continue. First of all, before I continue on battery and energy sector, I wanted to show you what is this market and how big is this market and the stock which we're going to see how big is this company. All technicals and fundamental things also will be covering. So let's start. Indian EV market to grow to $28 billion by 2028. This is what this article says. And what is the back end reason behind it? It's simply because government targets 30% electrification and we all know uh, we cannot uh, all jump into electrification at all at once because there are diesel petrol vehicles running, hybrid vehicles running. So it takes time. Everything takes time. So a 30% target, that's the target the government is holding and by 2030 they are, they are assuming we will go 30% electrification. And how much um, market growth are we expecting? So the current market is $16 billion as of 2023. And how much we are expecting? $28 billion by 2028. Not too far and we could really enjoy if we invest in the right company, right? Now we start with the other points. So how much Amaraja battery hold? Like this is a company we're gonna discuss in detail today. And um, it's competitors. There are so many other competitors also. One of them is Excide. And Amaraja and Excide hold the major organized sector market share. When I say that, Amaraja holds 30% in around 30, 35. Um, maybe like Excide also has 30, 35. So it depends on who has more. But to give you an overall perspective, so Amaraja and Excide holds around 60 to 65% share. Might be East 30%. And the rest is unorganized sectors, right? Now we know, uh, get the whole picture. Okay. Now let's deep dive. Recently, the company also changed its name. So what did uh, what was the earlier name? It was like Amaraja Batteries. That's the name we all know. Now it has been changed to Amaraja Energy and Mobility Limited, right? So the, what does it matter? Like why did that change? It all matters. Very important. Now the company, it's not going to change its core pillar. What is its core pillar? Building batteries, it's its core pillar. They are saying they want to concentrate on something more on energy and mobility also. So that's why they have changed this name. So that's a very good, uh, you know, strategy and a long-term perspective for the company. I'll, uh, so we have to respect that. Very good move. And uh, the company also says that it's one of the pillar will be lead batteries, but the other uh, pillar would be lithium-based tech. So when they say that they're gonna battery store uh, manufacture battery storage cell manufacturing renewables and battery management systems so those are the things they uh, they wanted to concentrate on right and let me give you some pictorial view also in here so they are uh, manufacturers of two wheeler batteries three wheeler batteries and four wheeler even for telecom towers right and then they are expanding like um, to to play in the ev sector very well they are even producing ev chargers Look at here, they have like 30 kilowatt, 750 kilo, uh, watt, and 3.3 kilowatt. So these are the different kind of EV uh, charges they prepare. And just to give you some expandable view on uh, what are other sectors they work on, you might know we have so many data centers to support the data centers, not to get, uh, you know, immediate shutdown. They have to have a backup for those, um, they need a battery. Even for, uh, you know, telecoms also similar things happen. So in order to support the telecom towers, they have to have different uh, battery um, backups also. And even for solars to collect the power in the, and the electrical vehicles they need, and even for, uh, you know, railways, they need a battery. They, they are producing batteries for them. And they are a global player also. And uh, they, then other uh, defense applications also, they are supporting with their battery systems, right? So now you get an overall view of what, what, what's the market share, how big are they, and how much they could contribute when uh, we as India move towards, you know, electric uh, vehicle or uh, more into renewable energy, right? So as we proceed. The most reason I like this talk is it's because uh, it's debt free and most of its financials are very good. 
and uh, the other reason i like is like the stock has been accumulating or like uh, uh, trading in the same price range for a very long period that i'll show you in technical when i explain that but to give you some perspective look at this past 5 years it is still down by 17.7% it rise during the covid period but again came back to its original prices it's a small cap battery based and it's into energy and mobility also and uh, the other most important i want to show you here is a p uh, trailing 12 months p right so it's 13 to 15 around uh, so each data would say you a different uh, different thing but uh, the sector p is 45 and i want to compare it with the peers also look at this exide and uh, everyday and look at their p's compared to amaraja so i see it as a little more fair value than the others and comparing is uh, comparing to its financials and other uh, fundamentals i still like to bet on um, amaraja batteries right so that's also a perspective i wanted to give you it doesn't mean you have to buy do your own research before buying right and um, look at this financial so, so there have been a cyclic business and it has been down for some time like uh, 2021 22 uh, year it has been little sluggish but um, but the rest of the time it has been doing well and there are ebida net income and uh, payouts also uh, the company has been giving some uh, okay dividends also right and as we proceed so this is also exciting me when i look at this data not foreign institutions foreign institutions has been uh, holding tight for three quarters but the last quarter they have sold right uh, from 35% to almost they have cut down 10% and where did that, that 10% go is it with retailers retailers uh, have increased a bit compared to previous holdings so last four quarters they have been holding two but uh, look at mutual funds so they have increased um, 3% that is huge and domestic institutions also have increased 2% that is also huge so the most important thing i always like to highlight small cap holded by mutual funds domestic uh, funds and also foreign institutions is a big positive why is that more positive they normally don't come into all three don't jump into small caps they pick and choose very very choosy guys so they they study they analyze and then they put their money and once once we see these kind of uh, patterns like they increase their stakes little by little why do they increase little by little why they why can't they buy uh, in a bulk there is simple reason is like they have a huge money they have to be a seller also so they have to create panic so uh, we as retailers sell a bit and they could collect from us right so look at this now wh- what did happen here retail had 42% and suddenly reduced so somewhere it has to go in here right so those have should have been accumulated and how does a, prom- a promoter look like they have been also consistently holding all the data right okay they have been very positive uh, points on um, amaraja batteries one is like uh, their av- uh, annual revenue has been rising in recent times that is a positive sign i wanted to show you and quarterly net profits also has been increasing by 12.47% that is also a very good thing and debt to equity ratio has been less than 1 that is also very uh, very good sign and um, and the negative uh, thing is stock price rose 4 point and uh, underperformed um, sector by 28% so when there is a fall this stock fell too much that is no doubt but as per technical i i see a reversal or a little fall could be there but not too big fall um, i don't expect too big fall to happen there right because the stock has already corrected too much and uh, as we proceed okay so this is a technical chart i would wish to show you and um, let me give you a, a high level overview of what i have written here so you understand i would say past 9 years from 2014 the stock has been accumulating in the same price range look at this from 2014 it's still at the same price not moved anywhere so if you have someone who have invested in 2014 you would not have got a much bigger profit right it's it's nothing you are at the same price range right and uh, could be the stock could be like this for 10 plus years also no doubt um, or b- no one could say that what would happen but we could you know calculatively predict like these could happen because when when a stock runs too much it can uh, correct a bit and accumulate that's very normal for any stock to happen and i see this very good stock 
uh, after giving a very good run, very long run, it has accumulated a long, longer period. And I see if it gives us a very big opportunity, uh, in my view, again, for short term and long term um, uh, opportunity holders. So they could really benefit out of these. And uh, other thing I wanted to also say you is like, if you want to expect a good returns, 80 plus uh, percentage returns or 100% returns, you have to have patience. And the time period you have to give to this talk is two to three years, um, a very good decent time. Then honestly, you could at least get a decent profit. Um, so this is again, my overall view on this particular stock. Um, as I always tell you, like we always have to diversify. Do not put all your money in one stock, even though everything looks very bright. What if a factory burns down? Sorry, it will not happen. But um, I'm just saying, uh, if something bad happens for the company, we also we have seen a car uh, company like they are. Uh, some of the cars have been burnt in China. It happened for Tata, I think. So, so there could be a certain corrections uh, happen in the store. So similar things ha could happen, right? So we have to be careful. We need not, uh, as a retailer, we only have small amount of money. We have to carefully invest in, uh, uh, diversify and invest in uh, right stocks, right? So, okay. And other points I want to also highlight you like, what is the company doing at the back end? Now we know it's a very good position. Is it sitting idle because it's a good position doing nothing? Just the name change is nothing for us, right? No, the company is targeting road rise. It's a lead acid battery sales uh, by 150 percentage, which is a huge um, because uh, the, the simple reason is like at the time, the electric mobility, the big move on electric mobility will boost this. That's a company is expecting. And they are widely spread into different uh, market presence like West, uh, West Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa. And they are also growing organically and inorganically. That's also a very good sign, right? And other things, uh, Amaraja batteries to expand into two wheelers market also to power the growth. So these are the different uses collected in, um, in you know, six months time period news. So nothing have changed. Still, the fact is a fact. And uh, the company has a brighter future. Of course, this is my point of view. And uh, the other other information I want to share with you is like, the company is also planning to invest a heavy uh, amount of 9,500 crores into Giga Factory. Also, the company have, uh, you know, invested a lot in a research facility which are working on advanced cell chemistries so it's also has a very large ambitious goal of becoming one of the largest lithium ion battery maker in the india right so these are the overall things i want to show you so uh, just to give you uh, some perspective on uh, what is this company what does it do how big is a uh, sector how we could future um, look into futuristic view and how we could you know, put uh, put our money in some proxy companies also, you not know, a direct company also, and also in proxies, like it doesn't work just on batteries. Now the added advantage we get is in like, they are investing in multiple sectors, the different energy sectors also, that's something, uh, uh, a boost for us if we are a shareholder of this company, right? That's all I wanted to share with you. Hope you like the video and uh, hope you benefit out of the profits uh, if you are invested in the long run. All the best for you. Uh, take care. See you next video. Until then, bye.